Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 11th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, thanks to Microsoft for providing us with more details regarding a recently patched macOS vulnerability that allows for bypassing of the macOS Transparency Consent and Control, or TCC, technology. This is the technology that basically governs uh, what files a program can access. And you may have seen it if you're a macOS user, you get pop-ups that a certain program, for example, would like to access your download directory or your contacts. And that information, whenever you give permission, is tracked in a database. This database resides inside the home directory, more precisely in one of the library application support directories and past vulnerabilities in the system, for example, used changing the home environment variable in order to fool the system what the home directory is. Now, Apple has patched this. It now looks at the actual get PWUID system call, which gets the current home directory for the user, but uh, that can be altered. So the exploit is kind of back where an attacker can set up a directory, place a database of the attackers choosing in that directory and then just change the user's home directory in order to have the system use that manipulated database file. Patches around these issues were released by Apple, but according uh, to uh, Microsoft are not completely mitigating uh, these attack techniques. I mean, teaching web application security and talking about input validation, one of the sort of difficult examples I always use is validating URLs. There's really a wide range of uh, different things that are possible with URLs. Also, a lot of ambiguities that can show up as you are parsing URLs. There's an interesting paper by researchers from uh, Clarity that goes into some detail into some of these confusions, how uh, different standards... uh, sometimes uh, don't necessarily agree or got amended uh, from past standards and how different uh, URL parsing libraries are leading to inconsistent results. So for example, one of the RFCs defining URLs uh, 3986 does differentiate between backslashes and forward slashes, while the what working group specification does actually say that backslashes should be converted to slashes and uh, basically be treated identical. As an example, and they list many, many more in this paper, they look at a simple URL, google.com slash ABC. So there is no protocol being specified here. Some libraries will just take google.com as the host name, while others will consider part of the path and leave the host name empty. So uh, you will, again, get different results. Then they're going to some detail how to use these inconsistencies In exploits like, for example, server-side request forgery, where a developer may try to restrict what URLs are being accessed, but due to these inconsistencies, it's possible to craft a URL that will bypass these filters. Pretty interesting paper if you are into web applications and really too much to cover it all here. They do list a number of specific vulnerabilities that they found in popular frameworks and such that are caused by these inconsistencies. And then yet more trouble in the NPM ecosystem. Now, I didn't mention this yesterday because it doesn't really appear that it's sort of news at this point that an NPM library was found to do something malicious or uh, something unexpected. This is a little bit different here in that the particular uh, malfunction of these libraries appears to be intentional on the side of uh, the developers and really more sort of meant as a protest. The two packages in question are Colors and Faker, and apparently the developer in sort of a protest against uh, corporations using the code for free has modified these libraries to spit out uh, infinite loops of arbitrary or random characters. 
Now, it turns out that these particular packages are very popular and used literally by thousands of other packages as typical for NPM. And as a result, all of these other packages are breaking now as well. Well, shows yet again that you need to be careful if you are including code. So definitely secure your software supply chain, as people call it uh, these days. Also, be aware there are different open source licenses, not all. All of these licenses allow you to use any code in any project. And of course, usually your recourse is limited. And well, that's it for today. Remember, it's also Patch Tuesday and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.